This is the second in a, a series of films about molecular shapes. Hopefully you're uh, coming to it having already watched the film called VSEPR. And um, this film basically uses VSEPR or the ideas of it to try and explain what different shapes of molecules will have depending on the number of electron pairs that we have in a molecule. Okay, and so hopefully by the end of this film, you're going to know the names of some of the shapes of covalent molecules. So all the important shape names that you have to have in your mind for a year 12 exam and to relate these shapes to the number of charge centers. Now, try and think of charge centers or as the same thing as electron pairs. OK, but we'll see hopefully shortly why um, a charge center is not quite the same thing as an electron pair, but um, why it's also quite similar. OK, so anyway, we'll start off by looking at the simplest, I suppose, shape of molecule. And this is called a linear molecule. Now, um, if you've got two atoms bonded together with a covalent bond, there really is no choice. They have to form a straight line because two points are always going to lie on a straight line. OK, so any molecule like HCl will be linear. When you've got three atoms joined together, you don't have to have a linear molecule, but sometimes you will. Now, let's look at why this molecule is linear. Well, if we take this central atom here, the carbon atom, right, and we now think about what VSEPR said, which is that any electron pairs around this carbon atom will try and get as far apart from one another as possible. Well, if we look at the number of electron pairs around this carbon atom, we'll see that there's four. There's four electron pairs around that central atom, but there's only two charge centers. Only two charge centers because these two pairs are a double bond. Okay, so there's no way that they can get apart from one another. They're, got, they're kind of permanently linked together. And likewise, these two pairs, they form a double bond. So although there's four pairs, can be treated as two sets of electrons or two charge centers and two charge centers that are trying to get as far away from each other as possible on the surface of a sphere will go to the poles of the sphere or if this was a planet they'd go to the poles so we get a 180 degree bond angle okay and whenever you have two charge centers you'll always have a 180 degree bond angle and you'll always have a linear molecule OK, so that's the first shape of molecule and what gives rise to it. Two charge centers, you'll get a linear molecule with the charge centers trying to get as far away from each other as possible, which is 180 degrees. Moving on to something called a tetrahedral molecule. It's called a tetrahedron because it's named after this shape, which is a triangular based pyramid, which is called a tetrahedron. OK. And the reason it's named after this is because if you take the four corners of the molecule, they form this kind of shape, all right, with the base of the tetrahedron there and the other sides of it there. Okay, so I'm just going to scrub them out. Now, when does this happen? Well, let's have a look at this molecule here. It's got a pair of electrons there, a pair of electrons there, a pair there, and a pair there. Okay? And you can see that they're all bonding pairs. So if I have four bonding pairs of electrons, notice how these are different to the four bonding pairs we had on the previous slide. Okay, This is also four charge centers, because this bonding pair is independent of that bonding pair. So four bonding pairs and four charge centers will give you a tetrahedral arrangement. And this bond angle here is 109.5 degrees. OK, so that's a tetrahedral bond angle, which was mentioned in the VSEPR film. Next shape, trigonal planar. The reason I've chosen this particular molecule, or this is an ion in this case, it's a molecular ion. We've got a pair of electrons here, single bond, a pair there, also a single bond, two pairs here, but that's a double bond. So we've got essentially three charge centers, even though we've got four electron pairs there. We've got two single bonds and we've got a double bond, one double bond, okay? 
But the two pairs in the double bond, they're not independent of one another. One another. They've got to stick together. So we've got three charge centers. Those three charge centers, as we saw on the VSCPR film, to get as far up away from one another as possible, they'll all be in the same plane as one another. So they'll all rest on a single plane, right? I can lay, I could draw them as flat on a sheet of paper, but here we can see them as before on the equator of a sphere. Okay, but they're all on the same plane as one another, and this bond angle is 120 degrees. So every time you get three charge centers, you're going to be looking at a trigonal planar, that's the name of the shape, and it's got 120 degree bond angle. Moving on to the next shape, a trigonal pyramid. Now this has certain similarities with the last molecule we looked at in that there is a central atom and three atoms joined to it. But notice the difference here because we've got a pair of electrons there, a pair of electrons there, a pair there, and a pair there. Now this is, as before, four charge centers. But we've got three bonding pairs, that's those single bonds, Okay, and one lone pair. Now when we're considering the shape of the molecule, if there was an atom here, which there clearly isn't, if there was an atom up there, this would be a tetrahedron. But this is now missing that atom because there's only a lone pair there. That's not a bonding pair. So now the shape is trigonal in the sense that they're uh, in a triangle, these three hydrogens, but I can't draw them in the same plane as the nitrogen because you can see the nitrogen sticking up above the plane of those three hydrogens. So if you ever have three bonding pairs and one lone pair, you're going to get this shape, the trigonal pyramid. Okay? There's another thing to remember. And moving on to the, yes, the last shape of molecule, but it can arise in two different ways. This is called the V-shaped or the nonlinear geometry or some people call it bent, okay, and that's perfectly legitimate. All right, um, this molecule here on the left, this is SO2, okay, we've got a pair of electrons there, a pair there, and two pairs there, but three charge centers. Okay, we've got a double bond, a single bond, and a lone pair. This is acting like two bonding pairs because... This double bond is acting as one bonding pair, right? Because they're not independent of one another. This is another bonding pair. So we've got those two and we've got one lone pair. Okay? If there was another atom here, but there isn't, then we'd have three bonding pairs and this would be trigonal planar. But there isn't an atom there. So there isn't a corner here. That corner is missing. And so the shape of the molecule is that. And it's called bent. Okay? Here we've got four charge centers. There they are. One, two, three, and four. We've got two bonding pairs. And we've got two lone pairs. Okay? So although we've got four charge centers, we don't have an atom there, we don't have an atom there. So this isn't going to be tetrahedral. It's not just the case that one of those atoms is missing. So it's not going to be trigonal pyramidal either. Both those atoms aren't there, so again, the shape of the molecule is just this V-shape, or bent, or non-linear. So notice, right, the key point here. Two bonding pairs and one lone pair, or two bonding pairs and two lone pairs, and you'll have this shape, the V-shaped or the non-linear shape. Now that covers all the shapes that you look at in the Year 12 course. The last two films, the examples of shapes, one and two, Okay, they deal with drawing the electron dot diagrams and building them up into things that actually allow you to determine the shapes. So they're the ones to watch next before you start looking at all the different types of intermolecular force and why they arise. And if you want to understand that stuff, it's absolutely crucial that you have the ability to predict shapes of molecules.